Duck Duck Moose a little over a year ago. Um, I come from different backgrounds. I have a background in architecture and business. Michael is a software engineer, and Nikki is an illustrator and designer. And Michael and I are also amateur classical musicians, and we produce the music in our apps ourselves. We started thinking about iPhone apps for kids when I first got my iPhone and saw that my then two-year-old daughter was just captivated by the device. I mean, I think kids always really like playing with their parents' stuff, and especially phones, but with the iPhone, um, with the uh, touch screen and the really, really simple interface design, she could actually learn how to do things like So she learned how to take pictures with my iPhone and would page back out and look through the pictures. I and mean, then the iPhone is really the perfect form factor for small hands. Um, interactions on the iPhone are so much closer to the real world than interactions on other technology like computers um, with a mouse. And as a mom, I was always carrying around a heavy bag full of toys and distractions for my kids in case we got stuck at a restaurant or doctor's office. And I thought, oh, it would be great to have something on my phone that was high quality and educational um, because I always have my phone with me. So our first app was launched in January of this year. It's Wheels on the Bus, based on the popular song. And uh, this was our children's favorite song. And we saw how so many children just love singing the song and doing the hand motions, the wheels going around, and the doors opening and closing. Um, we were also inspired by traditional pop-up books, like this one, with paper engineering. Um, and those tabs that you could pull to make the wipers swish. And so we thought, let's take the pop-up book and combine it with great music um, and great interactions on the iPhone. <coughs> So Wheels on the Bus was successful, so we were inspired to do a second app, so McDonald. Um, with this one, we added more screens and more interactivity. We also added some references and humor for older siblings and adults. Um, and our most recent app is Itsy Bitsy Spider. We launched this about a month ago. Um, and with this one, we were experimenting with a very condensed development cycle. So we completed this one um, in about five weeks from start to finish. We almost killed ourselves, but um, it actually ended up being more interactive, um, so everything that you see on the screen is interactive, and um, we added more depth and complexity to the interactions in this one. So all of our apps have done well. They've been um, consistently in the top in their categories, either in the education category or the kids' games category in iTunes, um, and each has actually broken. The first one I'm going to show is the, uh, Wheels on the Bus.
And this is actually surprisingly popular because <laughs> customers bring to us and tell us how much they like it. Um, and we have a feature in here to record your own voice. And so you can go through the different screens to record your own um, versions of the song. And we originally put this in because we thought that parents um, would record their voices and kids would love to hear their parents' voices. But as when we put this in front of kids, we realized that they love recording their voices and hearing it. And so it became a social experience where um, children, their siblings and friends were recording. And so this is really a great ad for us. Um, so now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch over to Second Apple McDonald's. Similar intro page to Vogue Slide Dance. And here you get to meet Old McDonald, who doesn't hear
names are on the page. Hi, nice to meet you. What's your name? My name is Chloe Dufour. If you touch him again, um, she'll get more information. The spider has eight legs. The spider spins over it and catches it. Water. And then we're also experimenting with a different navigational model. So um, if you touch the spider, I'll take you to the next person, next screen.
So now shifting to the five things that we've learned from a design perspective in creating applications for children. Um, the first thing is deep interactive experiences. This is really core to what we do. Um, and children interact with technology very differently, obviously, depending on their age and their cognitive development and fine motor development. So this is an example of a page uh, very appropriate for the youngest children, where there's one primary interaction on the page, opening and closing those doors and getting to play with the pigeon. And so for these children, they're learning about cause and effect, and um, really, they can repeat things uh, many times, and that's how they learn. For the slightly older children, we included more things on the page and multi-step interactions. So on the sheep page, all the sheep do different things, and um, you can shear that sheep on the right-hand side, but it takes a few times to pile up all the wool on the side. And then for the oldest preschoolers, like the threes, fours, and fives, we realized that it's um, really the more open-ended interactions that are most engaging for them. Um, so the example here is that you can decide which text put on which animals and how many to stack, um, when to drop them, um, and then with the eggs, deciding how many to collect there and how to arrange them. So there are more decisions involved, more choices to make, and more creativity involved. The second thing we've learned is to look at the world through a child's eyes. This is you know, one of the greatest things that we get to do in working with children and building these apps. And we're often really surprised by children. So we created this page um, as the bubbles page. And we spent a lot of time really making the bubbles so they were realistic, they were popping at the top of the water. Um, but then we realized that well, we have this fish here that's kind of static and we need to add some life to them. And so we made it blink, but then we made it jump out of the window. And to us adults, that interaction looked kind of awkward and unrealistic. And we thought we should just get rid of it. But when we put it in front of children, they just loved this one. Um, they would laugh every time the fish would jump out the window. They would do it over and over and over again. So I think with this one, it, we learned it was you know, something about the somewhat dramatic movement of the fish, but also the fact that it, it leaves the screen and then reappears again was intriguing for children of this age. Another example is the pig um, in Old MacDonald, where the chandelier falls and squishes the poor pig, and a little girl's voice, my daughter's voice, says, oh no, piggy. Um, and I think children were really drawn um, to the child's voice in this one, and um, so we actually incorporated more um, children's voices in um, later apps. And I think even when we've put our apps in front of older children, like eight years old, they um, really gravitate towards those interactions um, with children's voices. And so it's all the little things that make the magic, all the details. And you can see that the animals um, have blinking eyes, the fly kind of hovers, and the spider, um, when he gets up to the top, he starts dancing to the beat of the music and has various dances that he does. So what, we really um, take a very detail-oriented approach in looking at every pixel and every interaction and how to coordinate it with the sounds and the music. And, um, we really think that this makes a big difference to how enticing and touchable the app feels. And so we place a lot of focus on this. The fourth thing we've learned is if you've ever encountered a preschooler, I'm sure you've heard all by self or all by myself. Um, children have this natural desire to and do everything by themselves, and they learn the most when they can participate in a variety of ways. Um, so, like in our Wheels on the Bus app, uh, they can not only sing the song, but they can see the, the pictures on the page and the words on the page, and they can interact with everything, and they can choose which languages they hear the song in, or which instruments, um, or they can even record their own voices. So children are most engaged um, when they're having fun, so we place a lot of emphasis on making things And the final design theme for us was designing for children and their parents. This is especially important um, when designing for the youngest children um, because their parents are typically work, uh, playing with the apps with them. And this is actually quite a challenge because children and adults approach technology in very different ways. Children have this natural inclination to explore and touch everything. And adults tend to be a lot more cautious and seem to want to understand things beforehand. Um, children take their cues from the real world. so. Pushing the bus in Wheels on the Bus was very natural to them because it was like pushing a toy bus. And I've seen um, the youngest children, like 18 months, they'll look at the screen and put, see an animal and push their finger in the exact direction that they want it to go um, because that's how things work in the real world. Um, 
parents on the, or adults on the other hand, um, are conditioned to use technology in very specific ways. So we're used to using the mouse and clicking everything and poking everything. So they tend to try to poke things on the screen. Um, so we had to add tips in, into our apps, like the intro page, to explain to parents um, that you can do poke and slide things on the screen. Um, another example is this uh, in Itsy Bitsy Spider with the navigational model. Touching the spider was no problem for children. They touch everything, they touch the spider, they follow the spider around. Um, but adults, we found, would get stuck in the middle and they would say, I don't understand the mental model of how to get around. And, um, so we had to add a little tip in to explain to parents what to do when they don't touch it for a while. <laughs> Um, so now shifting over to the business side, um, working with Apple and the App Store. Um, one thing first to note is that with the iPhone and the App Store, app, Apple has created a new economy. So it opened up opportunities for developers, small and large alike, unlike anything else we've seen in history. So DuckDuckBoost would not be in business if it weren't for the iPhone or the App Store. And um, there's no way we could have been alongside big players like Disney and PBS and Nickelodeon um, in traditional software retail environments. So we've learned a lot along the way. Um, first thing we've learned is that it's hard to be one out of 85,000 or however many apps there are in the App Store right now. On the one hand, um, this is a great testament to how attractive this marketplace is to so many people. But on the other hand, uh, discoverability on the App Store is a big, big problem. You can see this is the home page of the App Store and there's just only so much that you can fit on the home page. Um, the key to being discovered and to being findable is to make it onto one of the top 100 lists. So either in your category or better yet, the top 100 list overall um, on the App Store. And um, obviously the best placement is to be featured on the home page and you can see this app is featured on the bottom and um, basically shoots up in the charts um, pretty easily for that. So we've learned about the App Store economics. Um, the way that the, your rankings work on the list is um, measured by unit sales, so the number of sales that you've made in the last couple days. And um, it doesn't take into consideration price or your overall revenue. So what this means is that there's downward pressure in the pricing. Um, everybody wants to be in the top list, wants to be higher in the top list. There's lots of competition, so the pricing um, tends to be thrown down. We've also, the third thing we've learned about is the sales models. We've seen two primary sales models on the App Store. Um, one is the tortoise, so these are the sustained sales. These are the quality applications that really meet the needs of their target customer and have sustained sales over time. Um, and then there's the hare, the big fast sales, the ones that have a lot of marketing buzz or that um, are potentially are featured in the beginning, rise up quickly to the top 100, but then quickly also fall. And so we've taken the approach of the tortoise. Although our, our apps have done well in the rankings, it's really the consistency over time that has made a big difference. So the fourth thing we do is that although it seems like there's a lot of that's out of your control as a small business, um, there's a lot that you can do to raise <coughs> sales. Um, you can cross promote your apps, and we've seen now that we have three apps that has really helped us. There's also, of course, PR and social promotion. Um, as a small company without a large marketing budget, we're doing everything ourselves. So pretty much um, a grassroots approach to contacting the press and blogs and um, using social networks and um, working on our SEO for our website ourselves. So we're really learning as we go. And, um, it's interesting, we definitely see a big boost in sales when we get a major press placement. And we also think that over time, this really helps us in terms of word of mouth and um, Google search results. Um, but it definitely seemed like earlier in the year, um, when there were fewer kids apps, kids apps on the iPhone were a little bit more newsworthy. And so it'll be interesting to see how it goes um, going forward. So the fifth and final thing I'm gonna leave you with is that um, ultimately at the end of the day, it's design that matters. Children and parents recognize good design, or at least they know what they like to play with, um, and parents see what their children keep coming back to. Uh, word of mouth, um, especially with social networks these days, is huge. And customers are also very vocal on the App Store with their reviews, and so both of these things really make a big difference to sales. Um, our apps were not the only titles of Old MacDonald and Itsy Bitsy Spider, and we weren't the first, but we think that um, ours have 
prevailed based on our focus on design. And so that's what I want. That's what I have for you today. If we have one more minute. I have a um, quick YouTube video that I can show you if I have a connection. Can you show Danny where the box is? Sure. Can you show Danny where the box is? Show Danny where the box is. Just let the whole thing out. Let's go. The wheels on the bus. Where is it? Where's wheels on the bus? It's a one-year-old. Where is it? Can you start wheels on the bus? Something we have on YouTube. We don't have this. Start it. Bye.